Certainly do appreciate you taking the time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, emanating from our outstanding studios, brand new, by the way, in the brand new building. Got to love that. Got to love our guest today, wide receiver coach, Troy Walters, very accomplished player at the collegiate level at Stanford. We talk about that. Played eight years in the National Football League. We talk about that. Players respect, trust. Coach Troy Walters, what he's got to say about playing that position. We talk about that. Talk about little nuances that are being uh, uh, installed in the Cincinnati Bengals offense by scheme, by formation, by concept, things they're taking a look at, things that uh, looked pretty good last year. Expand on that, maybe eliminate something else. All that has been going on and continues here during the offseason. And then finally, and most important, we talk about his players, and he gives us a thumbnail sketch of every wide receiver that's going to be at training camp, including tight ends uh, as receivers that will be lining up in the slot zone. They'll detach themselves from the end of the line of scrimmage formationally and come out in the slot and be wide receivers and run routes uh, there as well. A lot to listen to from wide receiver coach Troy Walters. What a great decision you made to join in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics today. Coming to you from our brand new building, our brand new studio. We're all pumped up, and we're particularly pumped up about the guests we have, Bengals wide receiver coach Troy Walters. This guy, I mean, hell of a football player in his collegiate career at Stanford. Let's talk about the senior year in 1999. Consensus All-American, Fred Belitnikoff, award winner for the most outstanding wide receiver in the nation. Uh, Pac-10, now it's Pac-12, but back then Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year. And all all conference, three years. I mean, every year you started and played at, at Stanford, you're, you're all conference. I mean, heck of a collegiate career. You come to the National Football League, fifth round pick by the Vikings, have an eight-year career with a few teams in the National Football League. And uh, Man, now here you are coaching in the National Football League. And we talked about this before, Coach. First of all, welcome. Appreciate you carving your time. Thanks for but, having me. But uh, I, I remember as a rookie, you know, it's like, okay, well, you had, a, you know, some success at the collegiate level. But here you go to the next level and the big boys. And there are guys 10 years old than you, 12 years old than you that you're working against. And, and I, I leaned on my line coach big time. And one of the biggest reasons I did, he was a pro bowl center. For the San Francisco 49ers snapping the ball to Y.A. Tittle before Y.A. Tittle went to the New York Giants. So I'm like, Bill Tiger Johnson, man, he must know what he speaks. And, and anything he told me, man, I was like a sponge. And I'm sure with, uh, you know, the, the playing career you've had on top of the coaching career, uh, this year just finishing up, you know, last year finished up your fourth year as the receiver coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, your players, they must be sponges, man. When you guys are in that uh, in that classroom, do you are all the eyeballs on you, wide-eyed, coach? <laughs> yeah, I've got a great group of guys, and and they're all in there. They're all they all want to be great. Um, they're all coachable, which is a, which is a coach's dream. You know, all, that's all you want. You want guys that that come in. Um, you know what? No matter if they're a first round pick or or undrafted free agents, you want guys that come in that are coachable, that are open to learning. Um, and as a player, I kind of as a, as a, as a coach, I coach from a player's perspective. So you know, I I give them input, and 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 I want to know what their goals are, and I want to know you know how they were taught to run certain routes, and you know if it makes sense, and and they were successful, then then they can do it. But if it doesn't, and I feel like I have another a better way to get things done, then then uh, we'll do it that way. But it's it's a lot of give and take, and and I think they respect the fact that I played at the highest level. Um, and then, uh, you know, and so everything I do is kind of I put myself in their shoes and and make sure that uh, what I'm saying and what I'm coaching and teaching is is applicable. And it's not just it's just not it's not just chalkboard or, or uh, you know, it's not just chalkboard talk, but it's something that they can do. They can apply and be successful doing it. The one uh, thing, the biggest difference between uh, Bill Tiger Johnson and you, Coach, is Tiger never jumped in there and did, you know, pass sets with us and all that. You'll run routes with your guys. I mean, I watch you out there. 
your footwork's as good as theirs, man. I mean, you can still you can still get in and out of cuts and and get some things done, man. You're you're still a really good route runner. I mean, well, that's, that's got to be yeah, impressive. Well, 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 I tell them, I tell them that you know, <laughs> route running and playing a receiver position, um, it's all about habits. It's all about um, reps. And so I tell them, I've done that. I've 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 run routes. I've worked on my footwork, my brakes for so long that it's like riding a bike. It doesn't leave you. Now, I probably can't do it as fast as I used to, um, but I can still do it. I can still put the cleats on, go out there, run routes with them because it's a habit. It's, it, it'll never leave you. And so I encourage them, man, when you're, you know, you're walking to, you're walking home. And I tell the rookies, if you're walking to the Reds game, you're walking to get something to eat, work, work on your footwork, work on your routes, work on the steps of each route. If you're at home, work on different. I mean, you may look stupid. People may question what you're doing, but on Sundays, it'll show up and it'll allow you to be successful. And so um, as much as I can, I like to put the cleats on and, and, and move around with the guys and and uh, and j- just have fun with them. So going through OTAs, organized team activities, uh, mandatory mini camp is right on, on the horizon here. Um, what, what do you tell what do you tell your your group? What do you tell them? Try to get yourself, make yourself that much better every single day. Don't waste a day. What, what's the big message from Coach Troy Walters to your players? That every time we step on the field, it's an opportunity to get better. And, and that's what everyone that's here wants to do. They want to get better. They all have goals. They all have um, things that they want to accomplish individually. And so I tell them this is a great opportunity. This is probably as much individual time as we're going to get throughout the course of a season. You know, we get 10 minutes of Indy. Um, during OTAs, you know, once the season's training camp season starts, it's five minutes. And so I tell them to use this as, as kind of spring training, get your techniques, get your fundamentals down, um, and just get better. And, you know, without T and Jamar here, it allows other guys to get more reps, to build that connection with Joe and the other quarterbacks, to take valuable reps so that they, they get better. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that the guys leave here and next week, feeling good about themselves, good feeling good about their technique, um, having good sound technique where when they go wherever they go in the summer for the next month, they continue to build on that good technique. You know, you don't want to build bad habits and then you go somewhere and you think you're working, but you're working on bad habits. And so um, it's a combination of on the field, making sure that they're improving their technique and also, you know, in the meeting rooms, in the classroom, learning the offense, learning um, the intricacies of the offense, the details of it, and uh, and just improving every day. You mentioned Indy, and that's 10 minutes of Indy and five minutes as it gets, gets closer to the season. Individual period, you know, where they're one-on-one, they're working with you on, on all their skill sets and all that thing, which all that type of thing, which is, which is so important. Um, you mentioned a couple of players, Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Now they haven't been, you know, at the, uh, at the OTAs, um, you know, I know you have a great line of communication with your with your players. There's trust, there's respect, there's everything both ways. Uh, have you been communicating with those guys fairly regularly, Coach? Yeah, I talk to them maybe once a week, probably no more than no less than once every two weeks, checking in on them, seeing how they're doing, seeing where they're at. They like to travel, they like to move around, so I like to know exactly where they are and. Um, right. And, and they're doing great. You know, they're working out hard wherever they are um, and trying to get in the best shape they can. And uh, and uh, so that they can have a great season. And they're both competitors. They both want to be great. Um, you know, I'm challenging Jamar. You know, he's made Pro Bowls the last three years. You know, I'm challenging him to, to be an all pro, you know, an all pro. They only take what three all pros, you know, pro bowlers. They take seven, eight, nine of them. They have alternates. Uh, not to take anything away from making a Pro Bowl, but the next step for him is being an All-Pro, being a top three um, guy that the the media, the players, whoever votes on it, they vote him as a as an All-Pro, and and T's yet to make a Pro Bowl. So you know, I challenge him, man. This, let this be a Pro Bowl season. Get your body right. Get in shape. Um, let's play the, the the full 17 games plus the playoffs, um, and 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 have a great season. And so. Uh, they've got great attitudes and, and uh, they're working hard. And I look forward when they do get back here in Cincy and on the field, I look forward to working with them. 
Now, I- interesting, you know, looking out there on the field uh, during the uh, the OTAs, uh, Joe Joe's not throwing to, you know, Chase or T or Tyler Boyd. I mean, you know, he's in Tennessee, so it kind of it looks it looks different out there. But the silver lining, a lot of these guys are getting a ton of reps with Joe Burrow, and it's good for Joe and it's good for them. I mean, you know, there's attrition and, 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 and you know, God forbid there's not much attrition. There's, there's no attrition, but there can be attrition. There can be injury to a position group. So, you know, getting some kind of rhythm, timing, confidence, trust is a big deal, isn't it? It is. It is. And I told the guys it's a great opportunity for them to to get valuable reps, to build that chemistry with Joe and the other quarterbacks. And we're building depth. You know, the better the the, the uh, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight receivers can can be, the more depth we have. And, and like you said, injuries happen. I mean, that's that's part of a that's part of a season. That's part of football. And so uh, we got to make sure that the guys that are behind the backup, so to speak, are ready if their numbers call to step in and 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 produce at the same level. Um, you know, we can't make excuses if a guy goes down. That we got to keep playing. And throughout the last few years, we've had it happen. You know, T's gone down at times and. Trent Irwin stepped up or Andre stepped up or, you know, uh, Trent Taylor a few years ago, he stepped up in a big game in the AFC championship game. And so these guys understand um, that they're just, you know, they're a snap away from, from being called upon and, and the standard doesn't change. I told him today, the standard is to win the Super Bowl, and, uh, and everyone has to work towards that standard, be accountable to that standard, make sure we're detailed to that standard. And as coaches, we're going to hold them, to that standard. And so the young guys and the guys that maybe don't get as much reps, they're getting the reps, they're understanding that. And, and now uh, we're only going to be better because of it. Guys like uh, Jamar and T that have a good amount of time on task, you know, with Joe Burrow in, in, in your career, if you had to miss X amount of time, it comes back quickly. Doesn't like you said, it's almost like, you know, it's, it's, it's a habit. It's a habit forming kind of thing. And you get in good habits and those come back quickly it's it's not not uh it, it probably won't take a whole heck of a lot of time for those guys to get back in, back in rhythm and time with joe burrow will it no it's not gonna take long um the biggest thing is for a receiver is make sure you're at the right place at the right time um so with anybody it's you know if it's a it's a, if it's a 12 yard route we got to make sure we're at 12 yard depth and we're working the details and the fundamentals so as long as they're you know and i know they are working on the fundamentals the details of, of what we do then when they get back you know it's it's, it's not gonna take long and those those guys are special players. Joe's a special quarterback, and you know, with special players, it doesn't it doesn't take long. Uh, you played with special quarterbacks during the course of your career. Joe Burrow, as you mentioned, is a special quarterback. Is there anybody that you played with that reminds you most of Joe Burrow, or are there traits from each guy that you know maybe Joe has a little bit of? What do you what? Give us a, a little bit of a description in your mind of of what Joe Burrow has that makes him unique, maybe similar to some of the unique quarterbacks you played with. Yeah. Number one, he's a competitor. You know, he's, he's all about ball. He's not into all the other stuff. He wants to win. And, um, you know, he, he has a tremendous command in the huddle, tremendous command of the offense. I mean, he understands the ins and outs of this offense, the whys he understands. He kind of reminds me of Peyton in the sense of he understands defenses. He understands what they're trying to do. It's hard to disguise. It's hard to, to trick Joe because he does a great job studying. He's in, the, he's in the offices all the time. He's in the meeting rooms. He's watches, he watches film. He understands what the opponents are trying to do. Um, and he's usually a step ahead of, of the defense. And, uh, and, and, and that's what makes him special. And he, he reminds me of Peyton. You know, I mean, Peyton's a Hall of Famer, one of the best that played the game. And uh, Joe's has that, uh, has the capabilities of being one of the best in the game. Um, he's smart, uh, accurate, great anticipation. Um, but really, it's the off the field. It's the um, intangibles that he has, the seriousness, the focus. I remember when I played with Peyton. I mean, at this time it was spring ball OTAs, and we do we did one on ones back then. And he was just as serious and in and in intense then as he was in December before a play or January before a playoff game when we were doing one-on-ones. And so, and that's how Joe is, you know, whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's, you know, May 28th um, or January 15th, preparing for the AFC championship, he's, he's locked in, he's serious. 
and and he brings out the best in those around him. And so um, love being around him and just seeing him grow and the sky's the limit for him. Once again, Tiger, a, a, you know, comment that he'd have all the time. If you're going to do it, do it right, damn it. You know, it's like, a, yeah. it's a good point, coach. You know, don't waste any, don't waste any time. Don't waste any reps. I mean, there's no, no question. That's, a, that's certainly the way to approach it. When you, do you have like a list of, of maybe the top three or four route running wide receivers that you've seen, uh, whether it's former player, current player, whatever the case may be? Yeah, I go back through uh, every year and, and kind of detail all the top receivers and watch their routes. Uh, shoot. Watch their routes and, and really critique how they get open, what techniques they use, what fundamentals. Um, you know, Justin Jefferson is, is an elite route runner. Devontae Adams is elite. Um, Brandon Ayuk. There's so many. Uh, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. There's so many. Yeah. Um, that, but I try to watch them and just see if there's anything that they do technique wise, um, you know, in each route, what's kind of the common theme that allows a player to get open. And, and when I find it, then that's what we're going to drill. We, we I, I find out, find drills to work so that our guys can be just as successful in those type routes. And so there's a lot of great route runs around the league. You know, I want our guys when 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 fans or when opponents put on the film. You know, I think every receiver coach would want their unit to be considered, you know, detailed, great route runners. And, uh, you know, that's the goal of, of really any receiver coach. You know, when I, when I look at uh, what you're doing out in the football field now with the OTAs, you got a lot of stuff in, man. I mean, it's like you, you, you better, if you're a young guy in particular, I mean, the older guys obviously are a step ahead in terms of understanding, you know, the concepts and the schematics and all that sort of thing. But if you're a young guy, man, you better get your nose in the book because they're not waiting for you, you know. And how many how many installations have you had with your young receivers? Because, man, it's impressive how quickly you get them up to speed with a lot of stuff you're putting in there because there's a pretty good volume of it, Coach. Yeah, one of the first things I told them, even before the draft, when I talked to them, is, is, is I told them, if we draft you that Monday, we're starting on install. You know, we're starting to get together one-on-one -on -one and, and learning this playbook because as a rookie – in order to make the team, in order to play and, and, and play, have a significant role, you got to know what you're doing. Yep. And so and that Monday after the draft, you know, I was Zooming with each of them individually, going through the playbook, going through the install. And then when they got here 10 days later, now we're going through the install with the rest of the rest of the receivers. And, you know, I tell them all the time, this is probably the hardest part time of the, of the year. Now, and then even training camp, when you have everything in, we throw all, we throw really everything at them in the first, you know, five six days. We have everything in, and so you know, Zach, uh, Pitch, he can they can call. The menu is so broad, right? So they're not we're not sure what they're gonna pick choose from. Right. But once you get in the season, now we have a specific game plan. We know the 30, 40 plays we're gonna run or whatever, and so the guys, you know, they they know. But training camp now in training camp, everything's in. You don't know when it's going to be called. And so you definitely have to um, be in the playbook. I tell the rookies all the time that, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have anything else to do. Right. Your playbook studying. This is your job. This is what you need to know. This is what you got to do is learn the playbook, understand it um, so that you can go out in the field and execute. So, Coach, how, how much of a – there's probably a little of both, but you're putting together a, a scheme or, or – or concept by formation or whatever how much of it is okay i'm i'm gonna have this receiver run this route because of the talent of that receiver particular receiver running this route or this route is the most successful route within the big picture schematic of all this how much yin and yang is there between okay let's let's tailor this to the player's skill set but not sacrificing, you know, the overall concept we're trying to accomplish. You know? Yeah, a little of both. You know, yeah. you definitely want to put your players in the best situations to be successful. Um, and then what I'll do is, as in the practice, whatever the script looks like, I'll make sure different guys get different reps. You know, there might be a guy, Andre, may not, you know, the first two or three plays, he may be backside. I know the ball's not coming to him. And so maybe play three or four, I put him at Z so that he can get a ball. He can be the primary receiver and, and see how he reacts or put him in the slot to see 
how he reacts because we want guys in this offense to to learn all positions to know concepts so we can be we can move them around so they're not one dimensional so we have flexibility as a staff and so and that's another challenging part is for young guys just to learn the entire offense and the entire concept and not just one position and uh you know the rookies are doing a good job and really we got guys in that room that are able to do that so it's it's easy for me so with uh tyler boyd you know moving on on to tennessee the the slot receiver position you know he took the preponderance of snaps there for a number of years for the cincinnati bengals do you think that'll be a committee type thing or do you think you know it'll be one guy and if it is one guy uh, is it is it something that uh, Burton, as a, as a rookie, can can understand and and be able to execute? Because man, there's so much to deal with as a slot receiver on the outside. You know, you have a lot less lot less going on in the inside. Man, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of activity going on. I mean, how do you? Uh, is it just try everybody, see how each and every guy looks, or what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, with TB, we knew what we had in the slot. He 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 played most of the most of the most of the game, most of the reps. And so not having him back um, is, a, is, a, is a big loss, but also a big opportunity for other guys. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see. I think it's going to be more of a, a committee. You know, uh, we even got Mike Gusecki who can play inside. Um, Tanner Hudson showed he could play inside. And then with Trent Irwin, uh, Charlie Jones, we drafted Jermaine Burton, you know, Jamar Chase, we need to move him around. So he'll find time inside. So it'll be a lot of guys uh, playing inside. Um, Like I said, putting guys in there to maximize their strength and their abilities. Um, But it's not going to be just probably one guy taking all the reps like Tyler Boyd did. It'll be probably a handful of guys and um, and moving guys around to to maximize their talent. I know uh, you guys do a great job and and the continuity of the coaching staff is is really, I think, beneficial to this uh, practice that goes on is, you know, taking the the the, uh, the playbook and, you know what, didn't really like the way that looked last year. Maybe, you know, we'll minimize that, but this looked really good. We'll add to this. And you guys do a nice job of, uh, of, of obviously, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's move priorities here in some of these plays, whatever the case may be. Does that, is that a continual process? Does that, have you done some of that? And then after the, uh, you know, mini camp and mandatory mini camps and the OTAs and all that, do it again before you go to training camp. How does that all evolve? Now, usually it works right after the season. We did a thorough self-scout um, evaluation of ourselves over the past few years. And and we've, we've changed some things up. Um, you know, I think with pitch, Zach has kind of been hands off and allowed pitch to, to kind of be in command of this offense. And he's brought in some, some new ideas, um, you know, Justin Riscotti, who we brought in from Minnesota, he brings a wealth of knowledge and understanding from his time in Denver and in Minnesota, you know, as, a, as an O-line guy, as a tight end guy, um, marrying up the passes and the runs. And so, you know, uh, definitely we'll see some new wrinkles in this offense. Um, you know, we're definitely not going to go away from what's allowed us to be successful. But uh, we definitely go, you know, self-scout, see what we didn't do well, see what we can do better. And then uh, right now, it's pretty much in. And so, you know, we're done next week. We'll get away as a staff, as coaches get away for a little downtime. And then when we come back, we're ready to roll. So the major adjustments are, are done. And uh, now it's just about fine-tuning and, and getting the guys ready to go. You know, you guys did such a masterful job of uh, Joe goes down and then Jake Browning, you know, uh, takes over the reins. And, and you guys geared things in, in, toward the skill set of, of Jake Browning. But, boy, some of the stuff, it all it all started with getting the running game going. But the play action stuff you had off your running game and some of the stuff you did was really, really good football. Uh, fun stuff to watch. You know, and it's like, man, I wanted, you know, shoot, why can't we? Do this with Joe, you know, do this with Joe and the, and the guys. We got we got to get that running game going again like we did. Um, but, I mean, sometimes out of out of a situation that you think, oh, man, this is horrible, sometimes some good things come out of it. I mean, is, is that something that might have come out of it a little bit? Yeah, we definitely found some things that we can do um, when Joe gets back and when he's healthy, which he is now. And and uh, like I said, with the addition of of uh, some old linemen and, and – uh, you know, Justin coming in, we can, you know, bring some, add some new fresh ideas, so to speak. And, 
and uh, and uh, and just do some different things that maybe teams haven't seen and that have been successful around the league that we we hadn't done yet. And and uh, you know anything we can do to get better, to add to this scheme and to improve and to allow us to to win a Super Bowl. You know we don't have any egos on this staff, and so we're all in it together. We all want the best. And so whatever that is, we're going to find it. We're going to do it. And uh, we're going to be successful. All right, Coach, you've had your hands on a lot of these guys here for the, for the past uh, few days uh, during the course of the past few weeks. And uh, it, it's going to it's going to end with the uh, the mandatory mini camp. And then you guys all get some time off and get ready for training camp and, and on you go. So let's let's talk about your guys. Um, obviously, Jamar and T haven't haven't been, been participating to this point in time, but based on what they've done for you, what's the biggest thing you're looking for out of those two guys to take their game to the next level in 2024? Just continue to be consistent, um, continue to do things at a high level. I think both of them know the, the weaknesses, things that they can improve upon, and that's what they're doing now. You know, obviously with T, it's, it's staying healthy, you know, and if he can play a 17 game plus a playoff season, then he, he's going to be one of the top you know, top 10 receivers in the league. And so it's just uh, working on the little things, working on things that uh, the weaknesses to make those guys better and just for them to just to compete at a high level on the field and then off the field, they got to be the leaders of the of the group, you know, without Tyler Boyd, you know, they're really the veterans um, of the receiver room. And so they've got to be a little more vocal and they've got to um, set the culture, set the tone for for the young guys and show them what it takes and to be successful. Um and, uh, you know, I'm, I know they're going to do that, and I'm expecting a, a big year from both of them. Let's go numerically here, Coach. Uh, Shedrick Jackson, what's he done for you? Yeah, you know, he's a guy that can run, athletic. Um, you know, he's gotten better. He was an undrafted free agent last year, didn't have great stats at Auburn, but came in, learned the offense, worked his tail off, did a great job with Darren in, on special teams, got elevated for three games. Um, and he's gotten better as a route runner, good hands. He's one that I think you can rely on him. And he's one of those guys, receivers that can play both play receiver, but also really contribute on special teams. And Charlie Jones, uh, not only, like you said, uh, re receiver, but man, outstanding return guy. And that, that was a big part of your game. Obviously you're outstanding return guy. I mean, uh, he's lucky to have a guy like you as a receiver coach uh, with your background as a punt returner as well. How's Charlie coming along? Yeah, he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. As, as you know, he had a good, good rookie year as, as a returner. Yeah. Um, definitely working on that aspect of the game of his game as well and to try to be more explosive. And then, you know, just trying to become a better route runner. Um, like I said, we're moving him around just to get a better feel of, you know, where he can play, what he can do. Um, and so he has flexibility to play some outside, you know, play in the slot and He's, he's gotten better this offseason. Yeah, I mean, he takes that uh, return ability to yards after catch. I mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. gets him out there out there in space with the football. Yes, sir. Trent Irwin, pro's pro. Tell us about pro, him. Pro's pro, Mr. Reliable. Um, he's come in, hadn't – he's left off. You know, he's, he, he's playing the same as he did at, at the end of the season. You know, always in shape, can run for days, uh, reliable. You know, I think Joe – would, would attest to just his dependability. Joe knows where he's going to be with every route. He understands the nuances of route running, understands this, the scheme and the offense. And so he's always in the right place at the right time. And he's shown the past few years that when his number's called, um, he's always delivered and made plays. So glad to have him back. Cole Burgess uh, out of uh, Cortland. Soon yeah. Cortland. So he was undrafted free agent from Cortland, same school that Pitch went uh, went to, won a national championship this year. So he's a, you know, he's a winner. Um, came in, you know, when you make that jump from these Division three to to the NFL, there's going to be adjustments, um, which there is. But he's doing a great job in the playbook, great job of uh, of soaking up all the coaching. He's like a sponge, soaking up all the coaching and and staying, getting out on the field early, staying late, just trying to improve his craft. So. Very pleased with uh, how he's progressing. Kwame Lasseter, the second. Yeah, Kwame kind of fits with Trent Irwin, just dependable, can play multiple positions, um, understands the offense, uh, can can contribute on special teams, um, great attitude, and, um, you know, he's just – he's doing a good job and can can play multiple positions. 
Kendrick Pryor. Yeah, Kendrick, we're glad to have him back. You know, he we draft we he was an undrafted free agent few two years ago. Um, got picked up. We cut him in the last cut, got picked up by Jacksonville. So he was on their 53 man roster as a rookie. Um, and then last year we were able to pick him up halfway through the season. Um, and he's doing a good job. He's making plays out there. Um, he's got it, he's explosive, has strong hands, and I think he's just keeps getting better and better. So he's going to be a force to to reckon with on this on this team. And then you mentioned uh, Andre Yostivash. Give us an update on him. Yeah, you could tell he's put in the work this offseason. Um, he came back and he's uh, yeah, he's faster, quicker, um, stronger. Um, you know, his, his short area quickness has, has improved. He's running through the catch. I mean, he he he's standing out as as one of the top guys, and um, love where he his trajectory. He keeps getting better. You know, he came from Princeton. We thought it was going to be a year of development, of getting used to it, and he he said no, and he he's he's taken off and done a tremendous job, and it keeps getting better. And um, he's going to be a he's going to be definitely in a rotation, um, if not fighting for a starting job. Tell you uh, physically, just looking at him when he came walking out in the field, I'm like, dude, dude's been in the weight room now. He's put on some really good weight. I mean, he's he's a strong kid anyway. I mean, so athletic. Uh, you know what he did in track and field, and uh, you know so many events and, and, and handled strength events and jumping events and running events. I mean, he's a skilled athlete. But man, I'm I'm thinking, look at the chest on the dude, the chest, shoulders, arms. I mean, and his legs. He he's. He's hit the weight room pretty darn hard. I was and, I was impressed. And, yeah, and he's and he's playing with great confidence too. You know, a year on a year in this system, he understands it. So he's playing with great confidence. He's not thinking. He's going out there and utilizing his athletic abilities because he knows what to do. Right. So you can see that. So uh, the only uh, draft pick, uh, the 80th pick, I think it was in the third round, Jermaine Burton. What's he looking like to you, coach? He's looking good. He's done a good job. You know, for any rookie, it, it, we're throwing a lot at him. So there's going to be some ups and downs. And he's a guy that, you know, kind of wears his emotions on his sleeves and he wants to be perfect and, and make plays. And there's times when, you know, he's messed up and, and he gets frustrated with himself because he wants to be great. And you just got to go over there and, and pat him on the back and let him know, you know, what he did wrong. And this is how we do it. And and it'll tell him to keep his head up because he wants to be great. He wants to be special. He wants to be impactful. And so, uh, you know, he's doing a good job um, in the meeting room, um, you know, around the building. And so I just look forward for him to continue to grow and make that jump from, you know, OTAs, have a great summer. And then when he comes back for training camp to take that jump, where now when we get ready for the season, he's ready to go and help this team be successful. TJ Hushmanzada mentored him, you know, a little bit with that route running. And to me, it looks like, you know, I've never run a route in my life, but to me, watching a lot of routes run over the years, looks like he, you know, accelerate, decelerate, change speeds in and out of cuts different. It looks like he's got a little bit of diversity to his route running. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, you know, has great acceleration, burst, straight line speed, uh, strong hands. It makes it look easy. Uh, there's times when I'm telling him, screaming to run, run, run. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like he's running, but he is. He's covering ground. He's smooth. Um, he catches everything that's thrown to him. And so it's really just now just mastering the details of the playbook, how Joe wants it, how the receivers, the details of the routes. And then once he has that down, he's he'll, he'll be able to play even faster than he is now. And and uh, like I said, when the ball's thrown, when the ball's in his area, he's he's gonna make a play. Trey Mosley. Yeah, we got him undrafted free agent from Michigan State. Um, he's doing a good job. Like I said, all the rookies, you know, I, we throw a lot at him. Right. Um, and so they, he's here early, stays late on the field early, last one off, working on his details, his fundamentals. Um, he has strong hands like like uh, you'll see training camp comes around when it's open and preseason, you know, anything thrown his way, he's probably going to make the catch. And so um, he's done a great job and I look forward for him to just continue to grow. And like you mentioned, uh, you know, Hudson, Gasicki, I mean, these tight ends that are lining up in the slot. Give us give us an idea of, I mean, how how much coaching do you do with respect to their route running and, and things you're looking for if they're out there in the slot? Is it like a, a, a you know, co-coaching deal or does one take uh, precedent over the other in terms of, you know, coaching them up on the routes? How does that work? 
No, James does a great job. James Casey, our tight end coach, he does a great job with those guys. You know, he played the position. Sure. So he understands the nuances of route running as well as, the, you know, blocking in the trenches. And so he does a great job of coaching. If he has any questions or, you know, anything about something, he'll he'll come in my office and tell me. But uh, those guys are tremendous, uh, tremendous route runners, understands the, understand the nuance at the top of the route. And, and um, you know, they're explosive provide a, a wide, long catch radius uh, for Joe and the other quarterbacks. And so they're definitely going to be uh, fine matchup. They're going to be matchup problems for a lot of, a lot of teams going forward. And, uh, and they're, they're doing a great job. Well, coach, I can't thank you enough for taking all the time you've taken with us today. I mean, I, I I'm really excited about how the offense is going to look. I mean, it, it's uh, <laughs> you got talent, <laughs> The offensive line coach, I mean, are you kidding me? If you're not 6'8", 350 plus, don't bother coming, man. If you're an offensive tackle, it's the Cincinnati skyline. I mean, and uh, four of the, of the potential starting five offensive linemen all are in Super Bowl winning teams and pro bowlers. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Got uh, got a lot going on, a lot of excitement. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm pumped up to see it. Can't wait for training camp to start. Yeah, we are too. You know, want to finish this spring, this oh, these OTAs off the, the right way next week and then uh, have a great summer and then come back and have a great camp. And like I said, the standard is, is, is the Super Bowl. And so we got to do it day by day, but, but that's the goal. That's the standard. And we have the team, the staff, everything in place to, to accomplish that, that goal. Well, you deserve a little bit of time, coach, you and the family, you got any big plans or what's happening? With yeah, the we're going to get away. We're going to fly to Texas, visit my, visit my parents. There you um, go. We're going to get to the Dominican Republic, take the kids to the beach. Um, my wife's from Seattle, so we'll try to get out there for a little bit. So we're going to be moving around a little bit. And yeah. Yeah, I told her I need at least a week of downtime because, you know, when you got four kids, uh, <laughs> that traveling, man, you get worn out by traveling. So I need some a little downtime here in Cincinnati. But uh, I'm looking forward to spending time with the family, relaxing, and then getting my, getting my mind right for a, for a great uh, 2024. Awesome. You got some freaking flyer miles getting racked up there, coach. But yeah. Well earned and well deserved, my man. Really appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. Dave Lapham here. And every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.